2 Kings chapter 13, moving on with the kings. In the three and twenty twentieth year of Joash, the son of Azahiah, king of Judah, south, Jehoaz, the son of Ju uh, the son of Jehu, north, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, and reigned seventeen years. So, what we do through Kings and Chronicles is we, this is what year the king of the south is running to the king of north. This is what the king of the north is route in, in rulership of the king of the uh, north. Comparing the two kingdoms and who's on the throne. And he, now we're looking at the king of the north, Jehoaz, Jehu's son. He did that which was evil. And that's what all northern tribes do. Southern tribes do it. They do some right and they got some bad. There is not one king up north. In Israel that does right in the sight of the Lord and he followed the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat well, look at that which made Israel to sin and he departed not there from Jeroboam's the first king of north when Rehoboam split the nation look how many kings we are God has said go in there and wipe out that king because of the sins because of the sins of my people the guy goes in there, he does what he's supposed to do by God, and then the sins of Jeroboam show back up. And they've been shown back up. And they've been shown back up. And they've been shown back up. And we are in the church age today. And yet, throughout the seventh church age, which we are in the seventh church age now, has there not been one religion, and here's this religion, and here's this religion, and here's this religion that follows that of Jeroboam. That there are priests not set up by God. There are altars not set by God. There are holidays not set by God. And God has set forth his church. God has sent forth the preachers that go preach the gospel. And you can do that which is right. Or you can follow that religion. Now you can say, well, I'm not of that religion. I'm a Protestant. Protestantism is the children of the Catholic Church. They follow the same ways. And there are Baptist churches today that have honeymoon and married into that Catholic Church and have the traditions of that church in their church. This one religion survives as well one religion today survives. And when God wipes out Israel north and totally takes them away, which is, will be coming up pretty soon, that's when God will take away what we just read in the Bible tonight. Babylon, she's fallen, she's fallen. So we've seen church and state, and yet we see God still have, there's that religion. You have a choice. And even the Old Testament. You can go down to Jerusalem, do that which is right, which is going on right now. There's a revival. They're repairing the, the, the temple in Jerusalem. They're trying to seek God. They're trying to do right. And on the other hand of the coin, here's Jeroboam's calves. That goes back to Egypt, and that goes back to Babylon. The worship of the cow, the milk that gives life. Now watch what God, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel for that sin. And when you're in that religion against God, God loves us. No, there's anger. And he delivered them into the hand of Hezio, king of Syria, Turns them over. And into the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazel, all their days. So here's a father and son reigning. One dies and the son takes over. And God still said, for the wickedness, for the sin that you're doing, I'm going to send troops into you. And I'm going to just have them just mess up your entire life. And that's been going through with Samuel. That's been going through with the kings. And Jehoaz besought the Lord. Oh. And the Lord hearkened unto him. Oh, so there is hope. 
And he, for he saw the oppression of Israel, like he did in Exodus, because the king of Syria oppressed them, like the pharaohs, like Rome, like Babylon will do. And the Lord gave Israel a savior, like the book of Judges. See, history repeats itself. Israel sins, God sends a savior. Everything's great. Israel sins, God sends a savior. So that they went out from under the hand of the Syrians. And the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before time. So here's a peace time. And you saw that over and over and over in the, the book of Judges. They were wrong. They repented. God sent them somebody. They got wrong. They repented. God sent an enemy. They were wrong. They repented. God sent another Savior. They were wrong. They got wrong. And then they repented. And God sent someone to help them. Nevertheless, besides that, they departed not from the sins of the house of Jeroboam. Though the king has gotten right. Though God has given them some comfort. And this pitches the church today. We are in comfort. We are in relaxation of a constitutional grant of this country. That we sit back in our churches. We're not being persecuted. We're not having troubles. We're not having problems. And we carry the religion of Jeroboam into our churches. And we say, God is so happy with us. Go read Revelation 3 if you think I'm lying. Who made Israel to sin. And every time you get that Jeroboam who made Israel to sin. But walk therein, the way of Jeroboam, and there remained the grove in Samaria. Now groves have become a sin. Because in those groves, there's a statue. In those groves of artificial plants you find in the church today, in that grove is a man that people lift up above themselves that they will worship and they will honor their pastor, their pastorate in the church today. And we don't think so. There'll be some people, if you say anything against my pastor, I'll kick your butt. But uh, let's, sing a, uh, let's sing a hymn that goes against the Bible. Uh, and, you know, they'll just sing it. They won't raise any ruckus. They'll defend their man in their church, but they won't defend God or Jesus Christ. That's idolatry. That's the golden cow. Neither did he leave of the people to Jehoaz. Now watch this. But 50 horsemen and 10 chariots. That's not a lot. 50 horsemen and 10,000 footmen. That's still not a lot. Listen, we have read over and over that there's been a military enemy strength as number as the sand of the sea. 10,000. That's not a lot. For the king of Syria had destroyed them. And he made them like the dust by the threshing. So in their rebellion against God, though the king has got right and the people have not got right, God has reduced their military. God is keeping them humble like we better watch out because we ain't got enough army to beat the enemy. Now the rest of the, and by the way, it was used by Syria to reduce the numbers. By God. For rebellion. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoaz and all that he did and his might. Are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the King? Of Israel, they are. And Jehoaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Joash, his son, reigned in his stead. Father passes on to the son. In the thirty and seventh year of Joash, king of Judah, began Jehoash. Now look, now, now here could be a problem here. They look the same, but they're not the same. And that's one of the troubles. And when you got Jehoaz in chapter 12, he's also called Joash. But he's not the Joash. I mean, he's not the, excuse me, I got messed up. He's not the Jehoash of Israel. There's a Jehoaz in Judah, and there's a Jehoaz in Israel. 
You got to get them right. Rightly divide so you don't make yourself a shame. Studying. The son of Jehoah has to reign over Israel in Samaria, and he reigned 16 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as they all do up north in Israel. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of... So there's that religion again. It's not dying out. How long has America and her government have followed the sins of that religion, even having a place called Maryland? Oh, we, we gave it to Scott, Maryland. No, it's spelled Maryland. Look at her flag or her coat of arms. It is the it is the state of the 13 states given to one Vatican state who made Israel sin, but he walked therein. Though it's a sin, though God has said over and over and over, I am against that. I am against that religion. I'll go to Mass every week. Though I hate imagery, though I hate idolatry, it's a way, it's a, a it's a it's an aid to worship. And we'll just remove that commandment out of our ten commandments and make number ten too. So now we still got ten. It's outright rebellion against God. Not to do that is right. And anybody who's done any public ministry knows for a fact is when you preach the truth, they're not going to huddle in their masses to come to the truth. And the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did and his might, wherewith he fought against Amaziah, the king of Judah. So here's a civil war. And they, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Joash slept with his fathers, and Jeroboam sat upon the throne. There's another Jeroboam. Some of the names are repeated. And Joash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Now, Elijah, oh, going back to Elijah, he hasn't been in for a while, was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. What do you do with the healing ministry? Here's a guy that has raised dead body. He has parted the, the river Jordan. He has had a vessel of oil come to the fullest so a woman could pay her bills. And he's become sick. And with this snick sickness, he dies. And we have not read anything wrong with Elijah except for a little bit of an anger issue when some kids come up and say thou ball head thou ball head and he curses them he's got an anger issue but he can't heal himself elijah elijah what's wrong somebody's put poison in the food no, just give me give me some meal it's okay now elijah elijah what that axe was it's borrowed give me a stick Elijah, you're sick. <laughs> Going to die. The wages of sin is death. There is no healing here. When Paul comes to the end of his life, and we're coming to the end of his epistle, uh, there's, I think, well, there's one man, he says, I left sick. Why didn't you heal him, Paul? Paul says, I have a thorn in the spirit. Why couldn't you heal it, Paul? Timothy, great healing powers to be that I have given from God. My doctor tells me to drink a little more wine for your stomach infirmity. Why didn't he send him a handkerchief? Why didn't he send him a, a, I don't know. Here's a man of God, and he's sick, and he's going to die of the sickness. Don't tell me it lacks faith. You're a liar. And Joash, the king of Israel, that's north, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, My father, my father. That's a title of respect. Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew, Matthew 23, says, Don't, don't, call, your, don't call him father no more. Stop it. End that. It was a title given to men in the Old Testament. Prophets. Men of God. You're not to do that no more. 
It was done. Not to be in the words of Jesus. And uh, the chariot of Israel, that's 2 Kings 2.12. Now remember, uh, boy, lose my boy. Elijah has carried over Elijah. He has been given double portion. As Elijah had asked Elijah. He said, if you see me going, you're going to get. So you know what they're expecting for Elijah? Hey, if, if chariots of fire and horses of fire came for Elijah, maybe double chariots of horses and Jared and fires, horses of fire are going to come from him. But that's not the case. He goes by death. Elijah never died. He's coming back and he's going to die. And the horse, the horsemen thereof. So it's respect. It's honor of Elijah. And Elijah said unto him, Take bow and arrows. Plural. What a greeting. Oh, thank you for coming to see me. I'm so sick. Yeah, that, that, that you know, your father in the chair, that was so sweet. Thank you. Can you put that in a Hallmark card? No. Nicodemus came to Jesus one night and Jesus said, You must be born again. What? what? These men of God get straight to the point. You don't go knocking on their door saying, oh, that's beautiful roses you have and break into a conversation about roses or whatever's in the front yard. You go right to the point, the gospel. You go right to the point. Elijah said unto him, take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bows and arrows. Look at that. Obeying. He said, uh, he said to the king of Israel, Put thy hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elijah put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, open the window. Okay, how did they do this? They're both. But eastward. Eastward. Open that window, it's eastward. Syria is northeast. And yet the battlefield is going to be to the east. And he opened it. Then Elijah said, shoot. He shot. Look at that. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. And the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek, that would be east, till thou hast consumed it. Or that arrow you just shot, that's God's deliverance, that's God's victory over the Syrians you're going to get. It's an illustration Elijah is giving to the king Joash. It's a material lesson using what he knows. He said, take arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite the ground. And he smote Thrice and stay. So he grabs three arrows. Boom, boom, boom. Hope oh, that was three times. Then he stopped. Now, what the implication we're going to get in 19 is he had probably more arrows. Or he just took three of them. Boom, boom, boom. And the man of God was wroth with him. Well, he's been obeying all along. What did he do wrong? Remember, the king doesn't know the object of this lesson. He just said, okay, that arrow is, is the deliverance of God. The explanation is coming after the illustration. Now, Elijah's like, I told you that arrow that went out the window is the deliverance of, of the Lord. When I tell you to shoot arrows, you should just have, you know, God taking care of me. Boom, 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 boom. If that one arrow is the deliverance of Syria, and you tell me take arrows and shoot, boom, 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 go for it. That's the implication. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, Thou shouldst have smitten five or six times. Now he smote three times. Thrice. One, two, three. He said you should have done it five or six times. I have heard a college person in a seminary, seminary, teach to us uh, out of the gospel that thrice was, was not three times, it was something else. Four, was it? 
All right, what, what Elijah said five or six times is definitely under five times. And it's not four, because the Bible knows what four is. And I swear to you, out of a college in Louisiana, that guy did not know what thrice meant. Ridiculous. Smite five or six times. Then hast thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. So he listen, he says, you know what? You should have smote as much as you had. Three battles is not going to be enough for the Syrian army. Four or five or six times, you could have done it. But you're only going to get victory three times. Man, you should have just kept shooting those arrows. Didn't I tell you it was the Lord's deliverance? So by the impression of Elijah, he is impressing upon us that that king of Israel should have known. Or maybe, in quite, why am I shooting these other arrows, Elijah? Elijah died. And they buried him. No healing. And the bands of the Moabites invade the land at the coming of the year. It's coming to the end of the year. Like it is for us right now. Elijah has died. The Moabites, those are the children of Lot. They are enemies of Israel. They're coming to attack Israel. And it came to pass as they were burying a man. That's the first time that word shows up. And this is going to be an interesting bury. And it's going to be a bury that applies to Jesus Christ. Burying a man. Not Elijah, but a man. Who is he? I don't know. That behold, they spied a band of men. Here they are, they're burying this guy, and here comes an army. Here comes men. They're going to fight. And they cast the man into the scepter of life. We can't bury no more. Here's Elijah's life. Throw him in there. Throw him in there. Let's get out of here. And when the man was let down, so it's kind of a pit, and touched the bones of Elijah, so he's been there for a while. His bones have started decaying. He revived. Look at that. Elijah has raised someone from the dead. And he's been dead. Jesus Christ, who has died, has risen from the dead. Is seated at the right hand of the Father. If I die, my body is going to be resurrected at the rapture. Those that have sleep shall, shall, we, shall not remain. And he stood up on his feet. Now that must have been a marvel thing. Heck, let's get rid of this body. Come on, quick. We're... Whoa. Wasn't he dead? Yeah, it had been four days, Martha said. He stinketh. Now, if Elijah dead could raise a dead body, why couldn't he heal himself? We all don't have that 100% healing. Neither do healers. But has he, king of Syria, oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoaz? And they're, they're a ferocious group of people. Next thing worse to them is, is the Ninevites. Uh, can't think of it. Ammonites. And the Lord was gracious unto them. Even though they are in wicked idolatry, wicked religion, God still had grace. In the Old Testament, under the law. And had compassion on them. What will we say about that today? God's not willing that any should perish. There it is. And had respect unto them. Now, because of who, what they are? Because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What is that? That's the word of God. God told Abraham. God told Isaac. God told Jacob. God says, listen, your seed of Isaac, they're forever going to be taken care of by me. They're forever going to be my people. I don't care how wicked they are. There's going to be Jewish people that are going to be in my presence. Now, those that reject me, they're going to go to hell. But those that do right, they'll go to Abraham's bosom, and they'll come to me after that. But look at God's word. 
Now, we have a more sure word of prophecy than the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have the more sure of the testimony and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because of the gospel of Jesus Christ and my belief and faith in him, I'm settled, I'm signed, I'm sealed, I'm delivered. Would not destroy them. God's not going to destroy me because of Jesus. Not because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but because of Jesus. Neither cast he them from his presence as yet. So even to the Old Testament too, uh, Old Testament Jew, there is that unassurance of surety. And I say unassurance because in the law, you don't know how you were going to die. You can live your entire life right and die that last moment in sin, and then you lost it. But if you're to do what God's told you to do, you're ever in his presence. David had that sure mercies of David. Solomon had that spoken by God. So Hazel, king of Syria, died. And Ben-Hadad, his son, reigned in his stead. Now look at that. Hazel liked Ben-Hadad so bad as that was his king, he named his son Ben-Hadad. Now get that. There's two Ben-Hadads. I mean, it goes on today. There are fathers who named their children after them, or they'll name their daughters after their wives. There's no contradiction. Study to show thyself approved under God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, Rightly divine the word of truth. Here's another Ben Hadad. And Jehoaz, the son of Jehoaz, took again out of the hand of Ben Hadad, the son of Hazel, the cities, which he had taken out of the hand of Jehoaz, his father, by war. All right? Plain and simple. Syria came in and acclaimed some land by war, by victory. The son came in, he fought against the Syrians, and he got the land back. That was taken earlier. Three times. Oh, that's what thrice means in the Bible. I didn't need a, a, a synonary, sin, S-I-N-A-R-Y, education, not to know what thrice meant. If I read my Bible, if I went scripture with scripture, the Bible, in many cases, I, I'm not going to get a percentage, but most of the words that you don't know, they are given a definition with scripture with scripture. Thrice, three times did Joash beat him, remember the, the, the arrows, and recovered the cities of Israel. But if he had done more arrows... He would completely beat Syria, and there would be no problems. So guess what's going to happen later on? We're going to have more problems from Syria. Meanwhile, people in college education for sin and area of the Bible who don't want to believe the Bible, they're going to have many problems coming up in their own life between God and them. But right now, we'll let the Scripture. We had no problem with that word. We had no problem with the Scripture. God told us what it meant. 